Well, I'm not Donna, but she asked me if I would take over this lesson, and I was more than happy to do so. So I pray that what is presented today is just exactly what the Lord shared with me to present to you. There's so much of it that I can identify in my life. So, without any further ado, I'll just get after it. I entitled this Power in Prayer. And we don't, we don't put enough power into our prayer. We don't recognize the power of prayer. Have you ever asked yourself, do I really know how and what I should pray for? I feel like we should approach God's throne in a most humble way. After all, he is the creator of all things. Let me qualify that by saying this. Everything except evil. God is not the author of evil. Satan is. When God threw Satan out of heaven, along with the demons, the other angels, he gave them authority or free reign over the earth, within limits to what God will allow. Revelations 12, 7 through 12. Let me just read that right quickly. Satan is thrown out of heaven. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. People, some people think God brings evil against a person as a means of punishment. God does not operate that way. If misfortune befalls someone, Satan is to blame, not God. Sometimes God will allow things to happen to accomplish his purpose in their lives. I'm reminded of Job and how much he was tested. Lost everything, family, all of his wealth completely. But did he blame God? No. No. What kind of faith did that man have? Tremendous faith. Sometimes God will allow things to happen to accomplish his purpose in their lives. Remember, we are but clay and God is the potter. Most of all, we must remember, God is love. God is love. Everything that God does is out of love for us, his creation. Now, back to prayer. Let's say someone approaches you and asks for prayer. We know from Scripture that when two agree in prayer, that request is confirmed heard in heaven my first inclination is to ask a few questions 
not that I always do, but I want to ask, do you believe God can answer your request? If you don't believe that, then what are you asking for prayer for? Do you trust his response to your request? Meaning, will your faith be shaken if he does not answer you in the way you desire or as quickly as you desire? We live in a microwave world. Brother Larry said that. What is your commitment to Jesus Christ? Are you all in? He is the one who allows your next breath. Can you fathom how much he loves you? Let's examine just how much Jesus loves us. Even with all the miracles he did, healings, casting out demons, raising the dead, his own people betrayed him and condemned him to the cross. First off, this was God's plan, knowing that his creation us humans could not live up to his commandments. The Word, God's Son, our Savior, left heaven to come to earth and be born as a human and walk the earth just as we do so that he knows what we go through. Why did he do it? Purely out of love. When he was arrested and turned over to the Jewish leaders, they had him beaten and whipped so badly that it is said that he would have been hard to recognize. He was spit upon and insults were hurled at him. Then he was forced to start carrying his own cross to Calvary. Then he was nailed to that cross, naked, just to add more insult and humiliation. Why? 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 Would he allow himself to endure so much pain and humiliation? Because he loved us so much. And the Father had seen that it would take just such a drastic measure to give humanity the opportunity for eternal life in heaven with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You talk about grace. Jesus shed blood, and boy, he would have shed blood as well as having so much skin and muscle ripped from his back and legs. The pain itself is beyond our comprehension. And he, realizing the hatred, insults, and humiliation, he endured without one complaint. How much would we have been complaining if we could even talk? He was dying for all of them and us because he knew he must for the forgiveness of our sins. Why would he leave perfection, heaven? Why would he leave heaven, absolute perfection, and leave the Father to come to earth? First, I would say the Father asked or said to him, Son, will you make the sacrifice and go? To which Jesus would have said, I will. I do not wish to say I know exactly what the dialogue was, but knowing the best we can just how much God loves us. We just cannot fully realize how so very much the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God the Trinity, loves us, His creation. If you can... If you are wondering if God really loves you when you don't receive the answer to your prayer, request, or demand, and some people demand, <laughs> how can you demand from God something? 
Then put yourself on the cross. Put yourself up on the cross and realize he died. For the people who demanded his execution and all the humiliation that went with it. He died so that we might live in eternity with them, the Trinity, forever. This eternity in heaven is not an automatic entitlement just because you're a good old boy. It requires a commitment to Jesus, a confession of your sins and asking Jesus to come into your heart. When you make that commitment and mean it with all your heart, then God promises in his word that you will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And the older I get, the more I look forward to that. I just, I look forward to that with a smile on my face. More than a smile, just a song in my heart. Caution. If you do not or have not made that commitment to Jesus Christ, you will, not maybe, stand before him to hear the words no one would ever want to hear. Depart from me, I know you not. The hearer of those words is then cast into hell forever and ever, into total blackness, never to see or hear anyone or anything except your own wailing and moaning, knowing that you had the opportunity to make the right choice, but you didn't. And now you will pay, that, pay for that wrong decision for eternity. Now I realize everyone in here, I'm sure, has already made that commitment. One of the reasons we're recording this today is that I hope that anyone that listens to it will be motivated to think, you know, your life here is just flash next to eternity. You know, as I was thinking about all that has been spoken of so far, it sounded like one of the old-time preachers. Fire and brimstone. I used to hear some of those when I was growing up. I was going to apologize for sounding too harsh, but I'm not going to apologize for saying what needs to be said loudly and boldly to whomever will listen. My most earnest prayer is that Christians everywhere will begin to stand up and speak up for Jesus and his gospel message of salvation. Amen. I'll open the floor up to any comments. Gosh. Well, I just, that was just laid on my heart and just kind of built along. And I, I just, as I said, the older I get, the more I look forward to heaven. And we have to sometimes reconfirm in our mind and read that if we read scripture and it tells that when you have given your heart to Christ and you try to live the very best that you can everything good that you could possibly do to get you into heaven won't get you there it's grace it is grace yes Jeff
Anyone else? Yes. Um, you know, my grandfather was a pastor, my uncle was a pastor. And talk about fire and brimstone. My grandfather and his fire and brimstone. You know, you're going to go to hell if you get your lipstick and you're going to go to hell if you have sex. The rest of you down on your knees. And so, but I think today, we've gone the other way. We had a feel good society. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I think it's up to individuals. Just watch these things on TV and certain things. It's just really a feel good. We just want to feel good. And we have a lot of pastors. It's just all about feeling good. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is hell. And there is counseling. And I think sometimes we lose track that there are consequences. Yeah, and we don't think that we preach so much on that. And if you're going to preach that, I, I think this is sin and sin. you got to sin. But you got to preach about the great people in the okay. world. Yes, we will stand before him. We will stand before Jesus. He is the judge. Can't blame anybody else. You won't have a lawyer with you trying to negotiate for your salvation. It's a one on one. And I love that one on one. The mediator has a solve the issue. The only mediator is the man who has a solve the issue. And he has a solve the issue. Well, I just, you know, I'm convinced more and more even when it tells us in scripture that Jesus wants a relationship with us each one of us he wants to know you personally and wants you to know him personally and that can help and help so much uh, That relationship is growing every day. Praise the Lord for that. And I love this class. I love this class. I wish we had more people coming in to hear because we get to share in here some of the deeper feelings that we have in our Christian walk. And when, you, when you're not in here, you miss that. You're not able to always do that out there in the auditorium or out in the sanctuary. So <laughs> I could say, well, let's encourage them, or we can always grab them by the scruff of the neck and drag them in here. Anyway, that's all I have. I, I realize that was very short, but if anybody's got anything else they would like to say, sure.
may sound a little silly, but every time I come to a green, green traffic light, I thank Jesus for it. And I've been having an awful lot of green traffic lights, and I really am thankful for it. And little pest mosquitoes. Because of this dryness, we've not had anywhere near the mosquitoes we've always had. And they've been such an irritant. But yeah. So, thank God for lack of mosquitoes too. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 